Hi, this is Dr. Rudresh. Welcome to my channel, Medical Microbiology Guide. Today, I will be discussing on viral test. Viral test was first introduced by Georges Fernand Isodor Vidal. So, the test is based on the principle of tube agglutination. So, there are various tests which are available based on the same principle. They are called as febrile agglutinin tests. So, they are done for detection of the Salmonella, Rickettsia, Brucella and Francella infections. So, in Vidal test, we are going to detect the antibodies against the O and H and antigens of the typhoid and paratyphoid bacilli. Usually, the test is recommended uh, to be done in the second week of illness when the antibody titers are high and the sensitivity of the test varies from 46 to 94 percent. So, let us briefly look at the structure of the salmonella. Salmonella is having two types of antigens, O antigen which is also called as somatic antigen and H antigen which is known as the flagellar antigen. The O antigen it occurs in the surface and it is made up of the specific sugar sequences. O antigen is usually less immunogenic and it is a lipopolysaccharide uh, complex. It is heat stable and alcohol stable but uh, and it is also resistant to 0.2 percent formaldehyde. Okay. The antibodies against the O antigen usually uh, be detected after 6 to 8 days of onset of the fever. <coughs> For the viral test, the O antigens will be stained with the blue dye. The H is a flagellar antigen. This is actually genus specific. It is heat and alcohol labile. Usually, the H antigens are preserved in 0.2 to 0.4% of far formaldehyde. They are strongly immunogenic and the antibody response usually appear after 10 to 12 days of the onset of the fever. There is one more antigen which is known as VI antigen. The VI was named because it was earlier assumed to be associated with the virulence. This usually overlie on the O antigen and it is present in few serotypes like Salmonella typhi, Paratyphi C and Dublin. The VI antigen it actually renders the bacteria inagglutable by their specific O antiserum. So and also it's poorly immunogenic. If you find the antibodies against the VI antigen even after the um, early convalescence, it indicates that the person is going for development of the carrier state. So, in viral test, we are going to employ only one O antigen and we are going to detect the H antigens of the Typhi, Paratyphi A and B. So, we are using only one O antigen because the, the factor 12 of the O antigen is shared by all the three species of the, the typhoid that is Talmud Typhi, Paratyphi A and B. Hence, because of the common factor 12, so we use only one O antigen and different H antigens based on the different species. O antigens are usually prepared by culture of the Salmonella Typhi on phenol agar and H antigens are usually prepared by adding 0.1% of the formalin to 24 hours growth culture of the Salmonella Typhi. Salmonella of respective species. Let us see the procedure. So, we require the test serum which should be fresh. Usually, if it uh, if there is a delay in the test, we can preserve it uh, uh, at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for up to 72 hours. So, generally, hemolyzed samples are not suitable for the test. The antigens that is commercial, uh, commercially available or the uh, in house uh, prepared ones. Uh, which uh, uh, the OH, AH and BH antigens. So, we need normal saline for the dilution of the serum, water bath for the incubation, pasture pipette with the bulb to uh, for the dilution, uh, doing the dilution and test tube, test tube rack and we use two types of the tubes that is Dreyer's tube and Felix tube. The Dreyer's tube is used for the H agglutinin which is a narrow tube with a conical bottom and the Felix tube is actually short uh, and uh, round bottom tube. So, there are various uh, commercially available uh, antigen kits are available. So, we can use any of those kits. So, initially, so for doing the viral test, we are going to take 0.9 ml of saline in the first tube 
and 0.5 ml of normal saline in the rest of the tubes. So here I am showing at uh, dilutions starting from 1 in 20 to 1 in 160. So if you want to if you want your final dilution to be 1 in 20, so we have to prepare an uh, initial dilution of 1 in 10 in the first tube. So we are going to add 0.9 ml of the saline and 0.1 ml of the serum. So totally it become 1 ml. So one part of the serum and the ninth part of the saline making 1 in 10 dilution of the serum. So now we are going to transfer 0.5 ml from the first tube to the next tube which contains 0.5 ml of the saline. So when you mix it, it becomes 1 ml of the 1 in 20 dilution. So see the doubling dilutions of the serum is done with all the tubes and the last 0.5 ml will be preserved if it is required to do the extended Vidal test. So once we have uh, uh, made the dilution, so we will be left out with 0.5 ml of the each dilution starting from 1 in 10 to 1 in 320. Now we are going to add 0.5 ml of the diluted antigen to each of the tubes. So when you add 0.5 ml to the existing 0.5 ml of the diluted serum, so it becomes total 1 ml and the, the further double dilution of the initial dilution will occur giving rise to a final dilution of 1 in 20, 1 in 40, 80, 160, 320 and 640. Now we are going to incubate in the water bath in such a level that the water level should be half of the fluid level in the test tube. So this will create a water current which will uh, make the antigen antibody reactions uh, in more efficient and they will settle down properly at the bottom. So we are going to observe for the, uh, the uh, agglutination and the clumps of the antigen antibody uh, clumps in the bottom of the tube. So generally it is preferred to see with the, uh, the mirror uh, and uh, uh, this, so the highest dilution of the serum which gives the agglutination is known as the titer. So you can see so it starts from 1 in 20 to 1 in uh, uh, 640. So at 1 in 6, uh, 6, 1 in 160 the, the agglutination has stopped uh, indicating that this is a titer for the particular serum. So this is a vital rack with the, the, uh, the uh, tubes arranged. So with each test we are going to put control, okay, control for O and control for H antigens which is nothing but a saline control. So the O antigen will give a compact granular agglutination whereas H antigen will give loose cotton wool clumps. So this is a test serum which shows an agglutination till 1 in 320. So we can see the clearing of the solution as well as the, the, uh, the sedimentation of the antigen antibody complexes to the bottom. So this is a saline control which, the, which shows the turbidity and no uh, only a small button formation. So by looking into the clearance of the, the solution as well as the, the sedimentation of the antigen antibody complexes both will indicate the presence of agglutination. So we are going to see till what tube the agglutination was seen. Okay. If we are seeing till the end we can go for the the further testing of this uh, the diluted serum which we kept in the uh, during the, the procedure. So this is a negative test for O antigen you can see the there is no clearing as well as uh, only a small button formation is there both with the control as well as the test. So this is the, the H antigen so we are seeing the agglutination is also seen here till 320 so we are seeing the, the clearing as well as the the sedimentation of the antigen antibody complexes. Again this is a negative test for the, uh, the uh, H antigen. So uh, the one thing uh, one precaution should be taken is you should not shake the tubes before the reading uh, of the results are done. So control tubes should show no agglutination and the test uh, dilution test serum dilution we are going to look for the highest dilution of the serum which is showing the agglutination which is nothing but the titers of that particular serum. Usually the 
we know the antibodies usually appear after uh, the first week and they increases for third to fifth week then they start declining so hence it is ideal to demonstrate in the second week and we are going to take one more sample after 7 to 10 days okay so if you are demonstrating a fourfold or more rise in the titers so then we are going to say that the person was infected this is because the if you do a single test the baseline titers for each region it varies again the uh, different places of a same uh, metropolitan city may show different titers because of the the variation in the occurrence of salmilla in that particular population hence the baseline titers for a particular region should be known before the interpretation of the vidal test generally we take at the o anti uh, uh, antibody titers of more than 1 in 80 and H antibody titers of more than 1 in 160 are suggestive of the enteric fever. So, if you do a paired serum samples that is 1 in the second week, 1 after the 7 to 10 days of the second uh, the first sample. So, if you demonstrate a fourfold rise, so it, it, all, it indicates that the infection is going on currently. Some textbooks they mention only two to three fold rise in the titers can also be taken as a positive Vidal test. So there can be a false positive Vidal test in case of uh, the non-typhoidal non salmella infection and also in case of chronic salmellosis associated with the cystosomal infection. So uh, in, in, in case of vaccination with the TAV vaccine or typhoid vaccine in some infections like typhus fevers, acute falciform malaria, dengue, uh, chronic liver disease, rheumatoid arthritis, the, uh, myelomas okay, and nephrotic syndrome. So there we can see false positive results. False negative viral results can also occur if you treat the uh, case in the early. Okay. So the early treatment will prevent the much of the immunological response thereby decreasing the titers and it will not it will be shown as false negative results then following a typhoid uh, relapse so relapse will weaken the immunity thereby decreasing the 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 amount of antibody produced in the body and uh, severe hypoproteinemia uh, carrier status and sometimes technical errors can give rise to the false negative vidal results so that's going to finish the vidal test so Thank you for watching the video, please subscribe my channel, like this video and press the bell button for the future notification of my future, uh, next uploads. Thank you.